From 2022 into early 2023, Starlink continued to get a little bit better and better. But by mid to late 2023, the Starlink performance actually kind of plateaued. But then 2024 came and the launch cadence continued to increase over and over and over. And so many more launches continued to happen from here at the Florida Space Coast. And therefore, performance actually is getting much, much better. And that includes for things like internet gaming and also things like video calls like Zoom or Skype, if people even still use that anymore. So what I'm going to be looking at here is how that service has performed over the years and its great improvement. I've been been a Starlink customer for many, many years, and I have really seen just how much it has progressed. While putting together this video, I actually went back to look at some of my tweets or posts, whatever they're called now, and wanted to see exactly what my interpretation was of the service. Let's go back to like 2021 when I was first playing Call of Duty. At this point, it was Black Ops. And it was actually very impressive that the gaming performance, the latencies were sitting below 70 milliseconds. At that point in time, 70 milliseconds was the bar. Let's fast forward to earlier this year in 2024. I wanted to look and see how well it was performing. We didn't really see a lot of that consistent 70s. The service was pretty good. However, one issue I definitely encountered was the spikes in latency, that low to high range in latency was rather noticeable. That is one of the greatest improvements in the Starlink service just within the last six months. So now let's go over some of the data that you might find interesting. First and foremost, let's talk about gaming. Because that's something I'm very passionate about and one of the main reasons I got Starlink in the first place. Gaming performance has gotten considerably better by looking at this map here. You can kind of see the lines are showing the different colored games across the board. Those are the seconds on the x-axis, the actual latency on the y-axis, and a few points to note here. Out of my testing here, 15 different games of Call of Duty, that first 30 seconds of gameplay for each round in multiplayer, not a single round reached into the triple digits. That is a vast improvement for my testing only back in January, not that long ago. The other thing to note is the lines aren't as jagged. And by that, I mean the latency is a little bit more consistent second to second. We no longer see very large jumps. We do, of course. It's not perfect. Stories online. But they're a lot more rare and it's a lot less consistent of an issue. Going back to January, there were multiple games where the latency was jumping 15 to 20 milliseconds or greater just within that first 30 seconds of gameplay. This time around, in July 2024, I had multiple games where the min to max latency change, that delta, was in the single digits. That is a significant improvement. Let me tell you, when you're gaming and you're jumping 20, 30 milliseconds over the course of 30 seconds, you can definitely feel that. But single digit millisecond change over 30 seconds, a lot more difficult to actually feel. So bottom line, when it comes to gaming, I can almost, almost recommend it for a professional fast paced gaming. This will be perfect for gaming on RTS games or lower pace games, say like Civilization VI as an example. But for those Call of Duty type games, those milliseconds really do matter. It is so close, so close to being a highly recommended product. Now, if you don't have um, access to high speed, low latency internet via fiber or cable, this is a no-brainer. I mean, it's going to perform way better than DSL or any other very slow services, especially things like cell phone providers as well, like T-Mobile or Verizon. This will likely even beat that. Let's talk about the nitty gritty in terms of overall performance. When it comes to download speeds, January, the average across my testing, that's about a 24 hour period, was 68 megabits per second. July, almost 
double. The average now 120 megabit per second, a significant improvement in that overall performance. In July, one thing to note, there are kind of these peaks of good performance and bad performance likely has a lot to deal with how people are actually using the service, the congestion of this cell that I'm living in. Peak performance was in that 7 a.m. to noon time frame, likely when people are going to work or waking up. That tends to be the highest download speeds. The worst time for download was around that 3 to 7 p.m. time frame. Still not bad, to be fair. No issues streaming, no issues gaming, and things like that, but it was slower service if you did have a significant download you had to go through. So there are just some notes that is kind of a bit of a unique thing when it comes to Starlink. Congestion is still a bit of an issue, but as we continue to launch more and more satellites, that's something that will likely to be fixed. Upload speed has always been a thing that I've complained about, but this also continues to get better. In January, the average was 18 megabits per second. Fast forward to July, the average is now up to 20 megabits per second, and there were multiple tests that were well above that threshold. So overall, the upload is also getting better. This is getting pretty good for streaming live video uh, in a professional capacity, think like gaming streamers. Also for very large uploads, say content creators with large videos, kind of like the one I'm working on right now. Let's talk about the overall latency, which again, in gaming, I was telling you it saw some improvement. And we also have other numbers to back this up. Still doing those speed tests, upload, download, you get a latency with it as well. That latency average in January was 59 milliseconds. In July, it's down to 48 milliseconds. Again, a rather significant drop in number and a pretty big improvement in the overall performance. I cannot stress enough just how much of an improvement Starlink is from the beginning of 2024. I've done these videos periodically where I do an update on how well it's performing. Almost every video has been an improvement aside from that one where it actually did get a lot worse. But other than that, overall there have been improvements with the Starlink service from video to video, year to year, month to month. This, however, by far the most significant increase in performance. Starlink is getting better and better. And if you don't live in an area with high speed, low latency internet, it's downright the best thing that you can possibly get. If you're in an emergency or a disaster area where services are down, Starlink can be a lifesaver or a way to at least keep you sane when you don't have power or access to phone calls to loved ones. Starlink is showing that it is the real deal when it comes to easy to deploy, readily available, and good performing internet service. I cannot, I cannot recommend it enough. It's going places. And I can almost recommend it to replace existing ISPs. I'm very much considering dropping my spectrum for Starlink just based on how well it's performing. The only thing keeping me in check right now remains the weather. During showers and thunderstorms, especially with heavy rainfall, you will have data dropouts. I just don't think that's something you're ever going to be able to fix. That is just part of the whole it being satellite internet. So for that reason only, I'm not switching yet. If Starlink continues to improve, I might just have to switch to it full time because Spectrum, quite honestly for me, has been a lot of problems. And in fact, my gaming performance is getting better on Starlink than Spectrum. Think about how crazy that is. Thank you so much for watching this video, guys. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave a comment in the video description or comments down below or to the side, wherever it ends up these days. If you like this video, feel free to like it. It really does help me out. Thank you so much. I'll also add this to my playlist of other Starlink content if you're into that sort of thing. Subscribe for more videos related to Starlink or storm chasing or all sorts of weird stuff I do on this channel. Thank you again so much for watching. We'll see you again in the next video.